This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather of it every man as much as you should eat, and you shall make an omer apiece, or take an omer apiece, according to the number of persons each of you has in his tent. What does that have to do with our spiritual life? How do we make application to verse 16? Is it suggesting, yes, quench our thirst and eat daily, and isn't it suggesting in your mind, let me, no, let me rephrase that, does it suggest that what you need may be different than what I need, or different than your spouse needs, or different than your child needs, or your friend? Because it says, gather it every man and woman as much as he should eat. And then it suggests the portion. Sounds like nurses to me. And you shall take an omer apiece. Doesn't that sound like you need eight glasses of water every day? I tell you. I'm getting excited. You can, you can see. I think it's spiritual application. Let's go on to the next verse. 19. Moses said to them, Let no man leave any of it till the morning. Uh-oh. You know what that's saying. Do you see that saying to you in your personal life? In your personal time with Christ? That you shouldn't defer it until tomorrow? You can't come to the... You can't come to the point where you say, you know what, I don't have any time today. I'm too busy. I'll do it tomorrow. In fact, tomorrow I'll do a double portion. What happened in that example of the manna? If they took more than they needed and tried to save it till the next day, it spoiled. It actually rotted. Now, it's telling us that we should be regular in drinking of the living water and eating of the bread of life. Regularity. Verse 21. They gathered it morning by morning, every man as much as he should eat, but when the sun grew hot, it would melt. Our time with Jesus should proceed anything else we're going to do for the day. You open your eyes, and before you go out to face the world, you should have had your time with living water and with the bread of life. You'll discover that no matter when you have to get up in order to make that happen, that your day and your successive days will get sweeter and your relationship will get deep deeper but remember we said that the pep there is some some prep work that has to be done you have to carve out that time and say this is what we're going to do in order for me to spend time with Jesus you know I must feed on his word I got to make the time you have to be intentional about it all right we're just about at the end <clears throat> how do these sorry for my typo truths apply to our life with Jesus the truths that we just covered a hint I put a little hint in there is Philippians 126 so I'll go fetch that and I'll put it up and then you can answer the question this is this is essentially our final question. I'll make a little comment at the end. He, uh, where am I? Philippians 1 6. I'll give you the hint. How? Do these verses in Exodus 
apply to our life with Jesus. We took each one and applied it to our daily practice. This is a more uh, overreaching one. Quench our thirst. Yes. For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. What's that mean to you? That if God called you, and he did, you wouldn't be listening to me if he didn't. And he, and he said, I love you, I want you, and I see you in my kingdom. This text is saying, be confident of this thing that he who began the good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. The day of Christ Jesus is his second coming. Now perfecting it is saying, remember Jesus back in Matthew chapter 11 said, uh, come and learn of me because my, and I will give you rest. My burden is easy. Um, and well, my yoke is easy and my burden is light I'm going to leave you with three specific things this is the answer to my question how do these truths apply to our life with Christ we've actually answered them already number one Food must be taken into the body, okay, um, to do you any good. Can't just look at it on the table. You got to eat it. Having Bibles in the house is of no value. You got to read them. Number two, watching somebody else eat does you no good. So being thrilled that your spouse, your child, your sibling is a spiritual person and you say to them, pray for me. It's not doing you any good. You have to feed on God's word for yourself. Third, once you've eaten something you lose control of it. Follow me now, because this is where first where Philippians 1:26 comes in. It's going to do whatever it is intended to do for you. Sometimes we say, you know, I can't read the Bible because I really don't understand. I didn't understand what I read, and therefore it's of no value to me. Wrong. When you know that God's word is life eternal. Even the things that you don't know, God will bring clarity to your mind. That's where Philippians 1.26 comes in. He that began the good work in you is not going to quit. He's going to see you through to the day of Christ Jesus, the coming of Christ. Lastly, food will affect your body regardless of your enjoyment of it. Sometimes we read a text or a passage of scripture and we say to ourselves, oh, man, that was that scary. <laughs> I don't like that. But it's there for a purpose. There's nothing extraneous in scripture. It's all inspired. And it's all intended for the perfecting of our souls unto eternal life. Because the scriptures are a revelation of Jesus Christ. It's him that we focus on. It's him that we keep our eyes on. Spiritual life is a result of coming to Jesus. 
coming to, to know him as a friend and be, by becoming familiar with him on a daily basis. And that means that just as you eat food, temporal food, every day, you've got to be able to ingest, take in spiritual food every day. Because if you don't, you'll die spiritually. Read your Bible. You want to pray. You can reflect back on this topic. <clears throat> Indeed, um, the letter from your friend Jesus the letter is the Bible and in it are the words from him from the Father that help us to know him in other words we know Jesus the letter is the scriptures yes we know Jesus from the book and not only is the letter the scriptures but the but but the the because they are God's words or Jesus's words they are the bread of life okay it is Christ um, when we ingest or take in food it's how we are nourished by reading scripture we are nourished okay yes um, there are times when Bible studies are useful but you must spend time alone with you and Jesus who was against the disciples was changed by God and completely changed to be a complete and different person to hate disciples than love and become one of them was God's completed work also. Um, I agree that there are some people who in scripture were enemies of Jesus Christ. Yes? Um, perhaps the most uh, celebrated enemy was Saul. And Saul believed that he needed to take the new Christian church and bury it. And uh, he brought people to justice. That was his thing. He was a bounty hunter. And on the road to Damascus, where he intended to gather up those followers of Christ and bring them back, you know the story. The light from heaven, Jesus intervenes, directly calls him to ministry, Paul accepts, is bewildered, speaking of my first questions tonight, remember Paul did not eat for three days, he prayed, he asked for forgiveness, Lord what would you have me to do, no food for three days, and he was blind, and, and um, Ananias was given a vision sent there to anoint his eyes and restore his sight and there was never a more tireless uh, worker for the gospel and Paul was uh, was was the supreme administrator um, of the church he walked those missionary journeys he took and visiting churches writing letters all of that that was that was Paul and so it is a an example 
uh, someone, uh, as you put it, Janet, who who was against God, but was completely changed. As Paul was reading the scriptures, he was a student of the Bible, and obviously it did him good when he met Jesus face to face, and our meeting with him will do us likewise. At some point we're all enemies of God and then we become respondent to his pleadings. Behold I stand at the door and knock if anyone will let me in I will come in and sup I'll have dinner with you. I'll spend time with you. Jesus wants to spend time with you and with me. Let's purpose in our hearts that that's exactly what we will do. Not next week, not next month, but tomorrow morning. Amen? Carve out the time. Maybe it's what you need to do before you go to bed tonight. Figure it out. When am I going to spend that time? How much time am I going to spend? What's my capacity? Do I need more food? Maybe you already have time set aside for you and Jesus. And you spend that time. But sometimes you're thinking, you know what? I think I need more time. that's yeah, fair perhaps your appetite will grow I can envision the spiritual food table set and were we able to see everybody who comes to that table we would find it remarkable we may take the European breakfast a croissant and a hot drink and discover that uh, someone else is there having grits, eggs, toast, juice, tea having a brunch <laughs> and spending incredible amounts of time we ought not look at others, but every man is, and every woman is to take that which is necessary for them. And that's my encouragement. If you'd like additional um, ideas and tips for the time that you spend with Jesus and getting into scripture and pursuing it, I'm more than happy to do that. Drop me a line, uh, ministry at inspiritednetwork.com, and I'm more than happy to provide that. What I would recommend immediately is um, some reading in John. I, I think read John 6, yes, but also read John 8, uh, starting with verse 42, and go all the way to chapter 10, verse 42, okay? You could do that this week. Spread it out over the seven days, between now and next Thursday. Meditate. Think about the circumstances. Find out what was happening historically, the setting of the stories. You'll discover that you'll have lots to meditate on, lots to pray about as you make application to your lives. Good night. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you even more for your uh, participation. It made it uh, enjoyable for me. I thank you. Will, Janet, be well. Um, in regards to your families <clears throat> and I look forward to seeing you next week I'll be here Thursday 9 p.m. good night